Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of On The Paint Table. It's my weekly show where you see what I got done and what I'm working on and what is coming up. So this week, um, obviously I, I did a lot of 40K painting. I got some of my Indominus stuff you guys saw on Monday done. Um, and I thought about finishing it all off. Like I, I did do a few details on helmets and things here and there as I was going through. But I decided so many people had asked how I got them done this quickly to the standard to like take a pause. I'm not gonna count them as done, but I'm gonna show you how I got to this step. Um, just with like a walkthrough, I'll, I'll pick them up and, and tell you what colors I used. Uh, I also finished two miniatures for RyQuest. I got Leadfoot and Treads done and Sam McHorn, um, former leader of the Double Dogs in her like cool power armor suit, her like Ripley from Aliens power armor suit she's fighting with. Um, and uh, unpacked and started getting uh, sort of like my collection of RyQuest stuff done so I can finish the first 24 characters because actually Privateer Press has just launched their uh, um, crowdfund for the second wave of RyQuest stuff done. So it's kind of put a fire on me to finish my gates and my treasure chests. I'm kind of splitting when I do that stuff with Mike right now uh, from Architect Studios, we'll be filming some Rack Quest stuff going forward because he's itching to play some games and we're reopening here in Ontario. So we're just being safe and wearing masks, but we can play some, we can throw some dice again and play some games. Um, and it's kind of a little far for me to get this stuff done. So he's, he's finishing the treasure chest, I think right now. I'm gonna start working on the gates and just kind of like getting through and getting everything done and trying to, trying to paint the stuff the other person isn't painting right now. Uh, so yeah, so let's show you the, uh, the stuff that got done and then what is coming up. So first things first, here's Sam, Leadfoot, and Treads. Uh, so Leadfoot and Treads basically are are kind of like the Dominion tank police of, uh, <laughs> of Riot Quest, running around in their little tiny Bonaparte tank, which is super cute. Um, and uh, they're cool here. They have like a cool decent range attack, but it's actually really good up close and they can pull people along. So they're an adjacent square friendly hero can come with them, which is pretty cool. And then Sam McHorn hanging out in her big punchy power suit, uh, which is a lot of fun to paint. You can see the little devil dog mascot like on her hip. She has that um, a great little plushie. Uh, super fun to paint. They're nice and easy. They're in fairly like military colors, so actually they were pretty easy to do. Um, started off with black primer, did all the metallics, did uh, blocked in all the colors, and then just gave them some dirty brown wash um, to kind of like finish them and make them look a little weathered and stuff. And then just went and picked up details. Uh, bases. Everybody asked about the bases. They're super easy. Just put down some mixed ballast um, and then dried bark as a base tone for everything, and then just dry brush with two tones of um, gray. So like I think it's like. Mechanica standard, and then maybe a little Dutch at Althuan coming up from the center, and you leave the darker parts in between um, the legs so it looks like there's a top-down shadow in between them. That's how you get that cool effect, kind of shadowy effect on them. Obviously not a big deal for this guy because he's he's filling up his base real good, but you can see it on Sam there. Uh, this is the ride quest stuff I got done. Let's take a look at Indominus. And here's my marine half of the Indominus box. Now, I don't have uh, Owen's Necron, so I can't really walk you through that, but if you message him at Gaming with the Cooler um, on his Facebook page, I'm sure he'll be happy to answer your questions. Uh, the biggest question I've gotten so far from people watching the Let's Play video is how do I do the blue? Uh, this kind of like pre-heresy Ultramarines blue is actually a airbrush paint or just a tra one of the color shift paints, which you could brush on as well, because uh, it actually brushed on the shoulder pad for the this guy right here. And it turned out just fine. Um, from Green Stuff World. So it's Cobalt Blue from Green Stuff World. It's part of their color shift paints. I think you can buy it separately as well. Um, and it's been put on over a gloss black primer. So the thing with the color shift paints is they work best over a gloss primer. Um, and then I've just airbrushed the entirety of the model that way. So put them together, prime them um, with gloss black, which is again another airbrush primer from... Um, Green stuff world, but you could use like a semi-gloss finish, just like aerosol primer too. I just test it first, just to make sure that the the stuff doesn't beat off. As long as it's not oil based, it should be okay, and the airbrush paints won't beat off them. And then the rest of the base coats are pretty simple. Um, it's ashen gray for the weapon casings. I used uh, lead belcher for the um, the metallics, like the metallic bits, the backs of the knees, the little like sort of jump boot sides there, uh, the backpack details, dried bark for all the leather, so all like the pouches. Um, that red is, I think it's actually a P3 paint, not to, not to throw you off the GW trail here, but I mean, we're already using cobalt blue, so what's the point? I think it's, um, the Manoth Crimson and then Bane Blade Brown for all the, the base coats on the, the papers and stuff. The, again, non-GW, the gold, that lovely rich gold is Viking gold, um, from scale 75. And then everything that was brown or like brown tones, like the purity seal and the gold is washed with Agrax Earth Shade gloss um, and the metallics were all done with actually just regular normal oil because I wanted to mat them down slightly and make them look a little more beaten and, and weathered. Uh, the bases are actually the Sector Mechanicum bases from GW. I replaced the base that came in the box set just because it matches my current um, Ultramarines. And then they were done with Eschen Gray, no not Eschen Gray, uh, Scab and White Dinge as a base coat. And then what I did was I thinned down uh, a red brown, like an orangey brown. I think it's... 
It's one of the furs. It's not XV88, but it's close to that, like an orangey brown. I don't remember the exact name. I'll put it in the com I'll, I'll look at it. In the if someone really wants to know, I'll put it in the comments. But basically, any orange brown. You could use more Fang brown, is what I'm saying. I want a little bit lighter, which whatever whatever the tone lighter is than that. And then I mixed it with water and a bit of um, art coat, uh, gloss varnish. And then that gives it the ability to like pool in the recesses like that. And afterwards, just dry brushed it with a little bit of um, Ashen Gray to sort of like blend back up the, the gray tones. And that gives you those, those nice deck plane bases. And if you wanted to leave it like this, sorry, the last thing I should probably mention is for the robes. Um, they were done with Recarth Flesh and the white ones with Althuan Brown. And then I just picked up the details again. And the black armor on the... Um, the uh, Justice Seer, just Judas Seer, Judas Seer, Judas Seer, and uh, Chaplin was done um, over gloss black with good old um, P3 uh, coal black, and so that was that gives that nice like gray blue tone. Um, yeah, and and so that's that's really it. And then I just after they were all dry, after I did all those details and washes and stuff, I just decaled them. So you could leave. I mean, I I would say probably 99% of people would be happy with the army the way it looks right now. Obviously, I'm going to go and do the. I'm a, I'm going to stickler. I couldn't not go and do all the lenses and the weapon effects and the highlights and stuff. I doubt on camera they're going to look significantly different. I think uh, the only thing is, is, so if you look at a finished one, which one of my finished Reavers, the only difference is there'll be a bit of a highlight on the blades. I'm going to pick out all the edges of the armor, like the leading edges with a little like um, stipple of silver, just kind of bang them up a little bit. The gold will go like maybe one shade lighter. And obviously, like the eyeball lenses and stuff will be a bit brighter too, and the weapon cases will be slightly brighter, and so will the pouches. But like, there won't be a significant difference when when you see these actually finished versus where they are now. And it's not like I batch painted these, so it's not a ton of work to get them to this level. I think most people would be happy with this level just after base coats and washes. So I figured it was it was worth doing to just kind of pause and show you the, the results. Now, <laughs> I didn't have any Sector Mechanicus bases in this size. In fact, I don't think you can, I think you can only get the Sector Imperialis ones in this size now too, uh, looking on the JB website. So what I did was I actually just cheated. I painted the, ba the stock bases um, with uh, some of the same scab white dinge, washed them with the same brown and then dry brushed them. What I'm gonna do is the, the, you get little base details with this basing kit, I'm just gonna glue a few of them on to try and make them blend. But most people didn't even notice I didn't have the bikes in the same bases. Uh, and I think I pulled off like the optical illusion of making them match the army pretty well. So just doing some of the like little lights and stuff that stick up off of these Sector Mechanicum bases, I think I'll be able to cheat and just kind of make my own. Um, so there it is. That's how I painted the Indominus box up to this point. And obviously I'll, I'll feature them again. I'll count them as done when I go back and do all the details and lenses and stuff. But I'm happy with them and I think most people would be happy with them at this level too. And so here's some upcoming stuff for RyQuest. Now I do have my gates, my Flugwug, and my Weird Wendell at home because I've already built and primed them. So I'm just showing off the other stuff for the, for the first 24 for RyQuest. I gotta finish Chuck Dogwood, Helga on Wheels, the giant like biker pig lady. Um, I've also got uh, the uh, four horsey men, which are hilarious. They're little, little gobber like I think they're actually Grimkin. They're the Force from the Apocalypse. Uh, the Terrorizer, who's every Ninja Turtle in one. Uh, Destructron 3000, of the, the robot. And then Master Gurglepox, who's a, um, a, like a former Crix baddie, who's like riding around on a uh, shredder, an, an old Warjack, which I think is pretty cool too. So I'm gonna get these finished, and I'm gonna work my way through them as I play games with Mike. Uh, and you'll see some more Rockrest on the channel soon. So you go on there on the paint table, done and on the books, either two or 26 miniatures done this week, depending on your definition of done. I'm gonna count it as two because I'm gonna finish off these models to my to my personal standard basically going forward next week. This is my new 40K new army for this edition. I'm gonna be working on the Ultramarines. So I've got like an Intercessor squad to build and paint. Um, I have a Reaver squad already done and also my Space Marine Heroes I can add to it. And then I'll just kind of like probably work through the, um, the units. I'm gonna add some tanks. I really wanna get that big gun repulsor and stuff. Uh, so I can keep trying stuff up. I might even get a robot uh, Gilliman to or ro Roboot, Roboot Gilliman to, to paint. Um, yeah, and just like kind of work through the models I'm excited about. So there's obviously a good chunk of stuff to start off, uh, and I'm I'm stoked to kind of work on them going forward. Uh, you will see more 40k stuff going up in the future because obviously there's been a lot of new changes to 40k, and there's more new stuff coming. All the match play stuff coming in chapter approved with the um, uh, chapter approved 2020 which I'm pretty stoked about. And then also the General's Handbook uh, 2020, which I need to get my hands on. A lot of people ask why I didn't do a review of that or the Lumineth. Um, we're still in a period where review books aren't really being sent out, probably because of the shipping and, and, and printing all super being delayed right now because of the state of the world. Um, so when it comes to book reviews and stuff, you guys will probably have to hold off a little bit. 
if it hadn't been printed and sitting in a warehouse prior to all of the, the changes sort of that are happening around the world with shipping and just like people being cautious, um, it's probably gonna take a while to come back in. But we will filter back to normal over time. And you'll see more book reviews, more things happen. Uh, and yeah, and, and we'll we'll get back to sort of like a pace as normal. But I, I know a lot of you were looking forward to the General's Handbook review. It is coming, but it's gonna have to wait until after um, I get my hands on it myself. So it will we'll do that, but it probably won't be a preview because everybody's gonna have it at that point. And Owen and I are stoked to play some AOS match to play games and and uh, jump in and do some more, some more AOS gaming because we've done a bunch of 40K. I'll be doing a bunch more 40K, but then we like to play other games as well. So anyway, big thanks for watching. We'll see you on, on the paint table next week. Till then I'm Ash. Have a great I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below so you get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Death Ray Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.